Coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, this is the award-winning Parareality Radio. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in on this Halloween edition of Parareality Radio. My name is Sandman, and I'm going to be your host for the next hour. Well, it's the fall season. The weather's getting colder. The leaves are changing into beautiful colors, and it's time for my favorite holiday of them all. Halloween. I love Halloween. Ever since I was a little kid, Halloween's been arguably my favorite holiday. And I'm really not alone in that. According to a 2015 Harris poll, which is the most recent one that I could find, by the way, Halloween is America's third most favorite holiday, topped only by Thanksgiving, which is at number two, And, of course, Christmas, which is at number one. Um, It's always been a battle for me between, when I was a kid at least, anyway, between Christmas and Halloween. Well, I guess even up to today since I'm an adult because I love, uh, uh, my mother passed her love of Christmas along to me. I love giving gifts to people and, and seeing the joy and excitement on their face as they get their gift from me because I am an excellent gift giver, at least according to my wife and Everybody else that I've ever given a present to. But anyway, Halloween's always been right up there. Arguably, like I said, my number one favorite holiday ever since I was a little kid. I've always loved all the the old horror movies. And and this time of year, I especially love all the horror movies that inundate the TV. I've loved the Halloween decoration shops since I was a kid. You know, all these shops that pop up and... I love going to costume parties, and it's the only time of year that it's okay to dress up in all those costumes that you've put together over the years, right? I mean, you know, is is anyone else like me, and they save all their old Halloween costumes just in case you want to wear them again sometime? I I can't be the only one that does that. I've got a uh, trunk full of old Halloween costumes, man. I've got, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I have, of course the vampire costume. I have a uh, Zorro complete with authentic reproduction Zorro sword from the, the Antonio Banderas movie back in what was it? 98 with, uh, can't remember her name, Catherine Zeta Jones. Um, <clears throat> let's see what other costume do I have? I have, uh, of course my Spider-Man costume. Can't, you know, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so I can't not have a Spider-Man costume. Uh, I have a, uh, <clears throat> Shadow Trooper costume from Star Wars. So let's see, that's four. Um, I've got a... Uh, what else do I have? Um, gosh, I can't remember. Oh, uh, Slender Man. I've got a Slender Man costume. And uh, <clears throat> it's not one of those full body suit things. It's 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 a mask. And then, of course, I have the, the accessories, the suit and the tie and everything that go along with that. Uh, and, um, let's see, what else do I have in there? Um, what was the last thing I said? Slender man. And of course I have various, um, masks and stuff of that nature, you know, skull masks and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> all in my Halloween costume trunk that those costumes are just waiting to be worn again. And some of them I have, some of them I have it. So I can't be the only person that does that. Right. So anyway, the, the last several years I've really gotten into decorating my home and front yard for Halloween. So I've got a cemetery up in the front yard. I got a skeleton and, uh, an upper torso of a body, both hanging from each corner of the front porch, along with like a, uh, mostly decayed ghoul, watching over the whole thing and I've got a a red LED skull light that projects onto the garage door and an Atmos FX projector in one of my upstairs windows so you can see it from the the road and this year I decided uh, to set up the outdoor theater in the front yard and show old universal horror movies to the entire neighborhood and all of the trick-or-treaters that was coming down. So that was a lot of fun. And now here I am doing this podcast 
episode, this special Halloween episode of Parareality Radio with you guys. So, <clears throat> man, I got way off track talking about all of my <laughs> all of my uh, stuff that I I like to do for Halloween. So yeah, Halloween's my favorite holiday out of all of them, and I've done quite a few Halloween specials on the podcast over the years as well. And it's been a couple of years since the last one, and I decided that it was time for me to do a new one. So tonight, I'm devoting this entire episode of Pair Reality Radio to Halloween. And what I'm going to be taking a look at is the satanic connection to Halloween, to try to find out why it's associated with this particular holiday, or if there's really anything to it at all. So before I get in to the show, let me tell you how to get in touch with me here on Pair Reality Radio, because if you are a regular listener, you know that there are a few different ways that you can contact me, Sandman, here on Pair Reality Radio. First of all, you can just go to the show website, parareality.com. I've got a contact form on the About page. You can fill that form out, and that will automatically email me whatever question that you have or comment that you have about the show. But actually, why would you want to do that when you can just email me directly? My email address is sandman at parareality.com. That's sandman at parareality.com. You can also uh, get in touch with me through the official Parareality Radio Facebook page. Just look for Parareality Radio there in a Google search or just type it in and you will find it. Uh, I'm also on Twitter and you can follow me there. My handle is at para real radio that's all one word once again that's at para real radio and finally you can always call the studio line at 615-692-1170 leave me a message um can be anything a comment about the show question maybe you uh maybe you had a suggestion for an upcoming episode uh topic for me to discuss uh, maybe you don't like something that I do, which was uh, I we touched on that the last podcast that I did had a guy who was talking about some of the mouth noises that I used to make, like all the smacking and stuff like that, thanks to my sensitive microphones. Um, or you can uh, just say, "Hey, I enjoy the show. I've had several uh, people who who do that, and and I've also had people who uh, have made suggestions for um, future topics." Um, if you have, if you just have a story that you want to tell, maybe you had something weird or strange or unexplained happen to you and, and you want to be a guest on the show, you can just call me up, say, Hey, I want to be a guest on the show. Or maybe you don't want to be a guest, but maybe you want to tell your story anonymously. You can leave that message there. That number to call once again is 615-692-1170. But be aware that I may play your comment back on the show simply by leaving me a message on the voicemail is giving me permission to play your comment or question back on the show. And you never know, I may actually answer the phone because I'm always in the studio these days working on the podcast. So you never know, you may actually catch me there. And speaking of people who, um, send in emails and stuff like that to the show. You know, I've added the fan mail segment back to the the podcast, and that's what time it is now. So I'm going to read a email from Mike, and this is in regard to the Epstein conspiracy theory episode that I did with my part-time co-host Eric uh, a couple of months ago. And Mike writes, In my opinion, you are the best presenter when it comes to the Epstein conspiracy theories. A lot of the other shows don't venture off the other of the conspiracies much, whereas you seem to go down those side roads enough to give a better view of the whole picture. I'm on the side that he's just another name on the Clinton's body count. Thank you, Mike, for that wonderful email. Yeah, um... You know, uh, the Epstein conspiracy theory episode that I did with Eric P., that has been one of the more popular recent episodes here on Parareality Radio. And we actually, uh, 
we did a a, a ninety minute long podcast on that one because we just were going down so many rabbit holes. We didn't even. I think we just kind of scratched the surface of all the theories that were out there that was going on with Epstein. But we tried to touch on as many different things as we could. And I thought that we really did a, a great job at that. And, and you know, kind of tooting my own horn here. And this just kind of confirms it because uh, Mike does too. And like I said, the, looking at the numbers, the, the uh, downloads and the people who've listened to the show on demand and everything, it's, uh, it's one of the more popular episodes that uh, I we did over the summer. So thanks, Mike, for those uh, those great comments. And yeah, I, I think he is. I I'm glad you agree with me. I think he is uh, quite possibly a name on the list from the uh, the Clinton body count. All right. So enough of the filler. It's time to get on with the show and let's start talking about the satanic connection to Halloween. While it seems like innocent fun to many people, a lot of controversy actually surrounds the Halloween holiday. Some are concerned about its religious or rather demonic affiliations. And this begs many to ask the question about whether Halloween is indeed satanic or not. The truth, however, is that Halloween is associated with Satanism only in certain circumstances and in very recent times at that. Historically, Halloween has nothing to do with Satanists for the primary fact that the formal Satanism religion wasn't even conceived until 1966. So as a religion, and yes, this is a recognized religion, but as a religion, this is a very, very new religion. One of the newest religions, only been around since 1966. So you're looking at, what, 52 years or so. For most people, Halloween's a fun time of dressing up like what I was discussing at the top of the show, creating elaborate costumes and decorations and visiting haunted houses, which I love to do, and taking kids trick-or-treating and, of course, the good old eating candy routine. It's become a heavily commercialized holiday, second only to Christmas in terms of the number of people who celebrate and participate in it. Now, I said at the top of the show that its popularity was number three in the Harris poll from, uh, what was it, 2015, but commercially, as far as people who who celebrate and, and participate in it, it's right there at number two. For some, however, the fears associated with Halloween go beyond fake, scary ghosts and into genuine spiritual warfare for the souls of the innocent. These people, including many fundamentalist Christians, believe that there's a dark and sinister side to the October 31st festivities. So where did this belief come from? Well, in order to further understand that, what we first need to do is take a look at the historical origins of Halloween. So Halloween is most directly related to the Catholic holiday of All Hallows Eve, which I'm sure just about everyone that's listening to this podcast is at least vaguely familiar with. All Hallows Eve was a night of feasting prior to All Saints Day, which celebrates all the saints who do not have a holiday specifically set aside for them. So that's where All Saints Day comes in, is it celebrates every saint, not just those who particularly have a holiday specifically for for them. However, Halloween's picked up a variety of practices and beliefs, most likely borrowed from folklore. Even the origins of those practices are often questionable, with evidence dating back only a couple of hundred years. Let's take, for instance, the jack-o'-lantern. The jack-o'-lantern began as a turnip lantern in the late 1800s. The scary faces carved onto these were said to be nothing more than pranks by mischievous young kids. Now, Likewise, the fear of black cats stems from a 14th century association with witches and, and other nocturnal animals. 
it wasn't until uh, World War II that the black cat really took off in Halloween celebrations. And yet, older records are rather quiet about what might have been taking place around this time in October. Part of the controversy lies in other re- in another reputed origin of Halloween, the ancient Celtic pagan celebration called Samhain. It's spelled S A M H A I N, but it's pronounced Samhain. Samhain, which occurred on Halloween, the night before All Saints Day, was an annual communal meeting to gather resources for the winter months. So in has many aspects, but it's focused on the changing of the seasons and the preparing for the dormancy and eventual rebirth of nature as summer turns into winter. These are pre-Christian practices with their focus on nature's cycles and many deities. They were viewed as a cult by the Roman Catholic Church. All Saints Day and So When coming so close together on the calendar influenced each other and a lot of people believe later combined into the celebration that we all now call Halloween. Now, actually, none of these things has anything to do with So When. In fact, if Halloween folk practices had anything to do with spirits, it probably would have been primarily to keep those bad spirits away and not attract them. That would be the opposite of the common perceptions of Satanism. Now, I had never heard of Sowin when I was a kid. How I got introduced to it was through uh, the movie Halloween 2 with the late great Donald Pleasance who was playing Dr. Samuel Loomis who was Mike the uh, psychiatrist of Michael Myers. And that's how I first got that's how I got my first introduction to so when was through that movie and uh they uh mispronounced it in the movie uh, they pronounced it phonetically and pronounced it Sam Hain and that's what I called it up until uh probably about uh 15 or 20 years ago I always thought it was Sam Hain because that's how it um was presented to me in Halloween 2 and if you've never seen the original, and I, if there's anyone listening to this podcast who has never seen the original Halloween in Halloween 2, then um, have you been living under a rock for your whole entire lives? Uh, those are Halloween, the original, 1978, and Halloween 2, whenever it came out, the very early 80s, I believe. Um, those are really the only two, like, true... Halloween movies, as far as I'm concerned, all the rest that come after, especially Halloween three was shit, except for the remake that uh, Rob Zombie did the Halloween and Halloween two remake that Rob Zombie did a few years ago, man, I loved, I, and I don't like remakes. I will watch them, but I generally hate the remakes with the exception of Halloween and Halloween two made by Rob Zombie He did a phenomenal job, and I really like those two movies. So you should watch. If you haven't ever seen the original Halloween and Halloween 2, you should watch those movies. So anyway, that's how I first became introduced to So When was through Dr. Samuel Loomis. And I got a couple of clips here from the uh, uh, Halloween 2 movies. And the first one is just Dr. Loomis describing like what Michael Myers is in his opinion. And so here we go. We're going to listen to Dr. Loomis describe this. I met him 15 years ago. I I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, right or wrong. I met this... Six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply 
evil. What do we do? He's been here once tonight. I think he'll come back. So that was Dr. Loomis describing who Michael Myers is and his kind of his essence to one of the uh, local police officers there in Haddonfield, Illinois. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it was kind of me introducing you to how I got introduced to the concept of so in which was through this movie, Halloween 2. And so here is the second clip that I wanted to play for, to you from uh, from that movie, which is, once again, Dr. Loomis describing to a police officer what what he calls Sam Hain, which is actually pronounced so when, what so when is, and uh, his understanding of it. So here we go with that. He got in here. Look over here. And here. Sister. Is that it? No. Here. What's this? It's gibberish. No. It's a Celtic word. Sam Hain. It means the Lord of the Dead. The end of summer. The festival of Sam Hain. October 31st. Dr. Loomis? Yes. I have to talk to you. Oh, I didn't recognize you. What are you doing here? Privately. Thanks. Dr. Loomis, you've been ordered back to Smith's Grove. Ordered? He can't order me. No, no. But the governor can. He spoke to Dr. Rogers personally a few hours ago. The governor? (laughs) Well, well. Dr. Loomis, this thing is all over the state. The patient escapes once, murders three teenagers. You shoot him with a gun, he escapes again. Someone should have listened to me earlier. I know, I'm sorry. Dr. Rogers is just afraid this could jeopardize our whole rehabilitation program. He doesn't want anyone from the mental health department anywhere near having him. Why did he send you down here, then? In case you'd already found him. Alive. Tell Dr. Rogers. Tell him you couldn't find me. Tell him anything. I can't leave Haddonfield now. I'm afraid you don't have a choice. There's a marshal waiting for you outside. So that was how I and many other people back then got introduced to So Win, or as Dr. Loomis incorrectly pronounced it, Sam Hain. And he also kindly uh, kind of uh, uh, misrepresented it as well because he said it was Sam Hain's like the Lord of the Dead and, and inferring that Sam Hain is somehow a Celtic god or something like that. And, and that's not what Sam Hain is. As a matter of fact, it's not even Sam Hain. It's pronounced so when, as I've already said, and it's not a Celtic God. It is a, it is a festival which celebrates the end of life, which is the coming of winter and the subsequent rebirth of nature, which would be spring and summer. So that's how myself and a lot of other people in that day and age got introduced to what so when actually was incorrectly there pronounced Sam Hain. Now, what the hell did that have to do really with anything? Well, as far as this podcast here is concerned, it really, you know, is, is just an example that I wanted to give to you of how things when it comes to Hollywood can get skewed and misinterpreted and, and blown out of proportion are, are people get misinformed, should I say, because of the sensationalism and sometimes, should I say, lack of research for what things really are. 
when, when it comes to, to Hollywood movies. So that's how myself and a lot of other people got introduced to the concept of So When. So there we have a little bit on the historical origins of Halloween. So what about the satanic adoption of Halloween? Well, when you talk about Satanism, you have to talk about Anton LaVey. And he's the guy that formed the Church of Satan back in 1966, was it 52 years ago? And he wrote the Satanic Bible within a few years after that. Now, it's important to note that this was when the first organized religion to ever label itself as Satanic came into practice. Now, LaVey stipulated three holidays for his version of Satanism. The first and most important date is each Satanist's own birthday. After all, it's a religion centered on the self, as far as what I know. So it's understandable that this is the most significant day to a Satanist. The other two holidays, and I'm going to just totally massacre this. You know how I massacre stuff. Uh, it's called... Walpurgisnacht, W A L P U R G I S N A C H T, which is on April the 30th, and Halloween, which is of course October 31st. Both dates were often considered to be "quote unquote" witch holidays in popular culture, and therefore they became linked with Satanism. And Levey adopted Halloween less because of any inherent satanic meeting in the date, but more of like a, a, a joke on those who had superstitiously feared this day. So contrary to some conspiracy theories, Satanists do not view Halloween as the devil's birthday. Satan is a symbolic figure in the religion. And furthermore, the church of Satan describes October 31st as the fall climax and a day to costume according to one's inner self or reflect on a recently deceased loved one. So you look at Satanism's approach to what Halloween is and their, uh, uh, you know, the third of their three official holidays. And you see that really there's nothing evil associated with this satanic holiday, it's more of a day to honor your deceased loved ones and reflect on who it is you are, where you've come from, and what it is that you want to become. So nothing satanic about it at all, other than the fact that it is the third of the three holidays, the third of the three official holidays in the satan satanic religion. And, all right, since I mentioned so in earlier, I feel that I can't simply just casually mention it and then just kind of like leave it out entirely. Just play a couple of clips from Halloween 2 and then say, oh, you know, here it is, and then not address it a little bit deeper. So that's what I want to do with this segment of the show here. So while so in is more of a, uh, a Celtic religion, than it is a satanic one. A lot of people connect the two and believe that both are demonic in a lot of ways. While in fact, the two are not similar at all, I feel that I, I must address Soen in order to set the record straight. Soen has many aspects, but focused on the changing of seasons and preparing for the dormancy and eventual rebirth of nature as summer turned to winter is its main focus. These are pre-Christian practices with their focus on nature's cycles and many deities, and they were viewed as a cult by the Roman Catholic Church. All Saints Day and Sowen coming so close together on the calendar influenced each other, and as many people believe, later combined into the celebration that we all now call Halloween. So, there is, like I said, a a Celtic religion which predates Christianity that kind of, you know, 
Christianity took all of the quote unquote pagan holidays and turned them into Christian holidays. And uh, Halloween kind of is not, uh, it did not escape that. Um, And Sowin is not a evil holiday. It's not an evil practice. It's celebrating, like I said before, the the death of nature, the coming of winter, i.e., and then the subsequent rebirth of nature, or the coming of spring and summer. So it's it's they celebrated stuff for harvesting and 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 growing crops and stuff like that. So, you know, while it was a holiday of death, it was not a celebration of literal death and all things related to death and death of actual human beings. It's a symbolic death of nature. It's saying, hey, winter's coming, our crops are dying, and we're going to celebrate the fact that this life cycle of nature is over with and that there's going to be another one in a few months. So that's what so when is in a nutshell to me. So now we've taken a brief look at the historical origins of Halloween. We've looked at the satanic adoption of Halloween. We've taken a look at so when and kind of uh, looked at very briefly what so when actually is. Now we have to take a pause and we have to look at the right wing Christian point of view about this. So the Bible is pretty clear about its position on magic and the occult. For example, Exodus verse 22, or let's see, Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, should I say, commands that, and I quote, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Because witchcraft is seen as an abomination in the eyes of God, along with other occult practices like dowsing and astrology and Ouija boards, anything associated with it is to be shunned as something evil. So you may have to ask yourself, so what's what's the big deal, right? What exactly is the link between the devil and the day kids dress up as, you know, ghosts and Spider-Man and Shrek and the Avengers, you know, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, all that sorts of stuff. Oh, Christian evangelist Phil Phillips and Joan Hake, Robbie, in their book, Halloween Satanism, explain why many fundamentalists are concerned about Halloween. And this is what they say in the book. A tragic byproduct of fear in the lives of children as early as prepubescence is the interest and involvement in supernatural occult phenomena. Now, these are two Christian evangelists who are writing a book and saying that it's in the interest and the involvement of a supernatural occult phenomena for to 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 like indoctrine these prepubescent children in what evil uh, in Satanism and the occult. So, what they believe is if if a child is scared by uh, like say a, a a zombie or or something like that in a haunted house or or uh, a spooky witch costume that that child's natural curiosity is soon going to lead them to read books and watch TV shows and movies and such on on the things that scared them like dead bodies or witches for example and according to Phillips and Robbie this is going to start children on the road to satanic practices so of course it's true that Halloween practices, just like Christmas, Thanksgiving, and other holidays practices and, and, and rituals, have a historical context and make use of certain symbols and food and, and music and so on. But just because there's a, a long history of real, genuine witchcraft claims, like those that resulted in the infamous Salem Witch Trials of uh, 1692, well, that, that doesn't mean that 
any child who sees a, a, a green skin, pointy hatted uh, woman in a witch costume is going to become interested in magic or witchcraft, much less become a witch themselves. And if you know anything about quote unquote, as I use my air quotes here on the podcast that you can't see, if you know anything about witches, you'll know that witch, witches are what people who practice the Wiccan religion call themselves. So once again, we have a religion that's called Wicca, whose practitioners will often call themselves witches. Not everyone does, but most people do. But it is a religion of nature. It's not of the occult and and Satan and demons and stuff. And you don't have, you know, three green skin witches with long pointy nose with moles on them and big pointy hats and black dress costumes sitting around a big cauldron going double, double toil and trouble. I have newt, wing of bat, leg of frog, and shit like that. Had to make a rhyme. You know, you you don't you don't see that. Now, are there people who practice the the black or dark arts of magic and stuff like that? Yes, there are, but that's not necessarily what Wicca is. Wicca is a religion unto itself, and it's a religion that celebrates nature. That's what Wicca is. So if you do have someone, a prepubescent who gets scared by a witch in a haunted house, and then they become interested in this. Why did this scare me? And they do research and want to learn about this. They will be drawn to probably what is the Wiccan religion, and they will be um, better informed, should I say, than these two yahoos who are, who are talking about this crap. So unlike concerned adults, who read sinister meanings into things that they fear or, or, or shun, children tend to take things at face value, right? They're more concerned about how much candy they get or or how good their costume is on Halloween rather than, you know, that their black cat lawn ornament is really an invocation or invitation for Satan. They, they're more concerned with what's going on with the candy they're more concerned with how good does my costume look what are my friends gonna think of of my costume is my costume stupid how much candy did i get in relation to bob over here did he get more than i got did he get chocolate and i got skittles you know and you know when you're a kid and you go you don't go very few kids go trick-or-treating by themselves it's always in a group right and you go trick-or-treating and when you go trick-or-treating in the group, you have a couple of goals. Number one, you want your costume to be better than everybody else's. And number two, you want to get more candy than everybody else in the group, right? Those are your two main goals. And then after it's all over with, you go back to the clubhouse or to whoever's house you're spending the night at, and then there's the infamous candy trade. That has to take place, you know? And that's what kids are worried about. They're just worried about the here and now and having a good time. They're not going to really, really be worried about did the person who was dressed as a witch, does that mean that this is that evil? They're really not concerned about that. Um, unfortunately, some religious groups have co-opted Halloween for their own purposes, creating their own evangelical version called hell houses to give wayward teenagers a chance to be scared straight. Other religious organizations have tried to ban the holiday on the grounds that it promises that it promotes um, paganism, if not satanic beliefs. Now we have a uh, a hell house here in the Nashville area, and no, I have never been to uh, the hell house, and I am never going to go to the hell house. I think that uh, when you have something like that set up with a particular goal in mind to convert people or scare them straight, you know, uh, I, I, I just don't. That's propaganda. You, you, religion is Christianity. Should I say is just notorious for their use of propaganda and. 
their co-opting of other things. Um, you know, um, look at all of the pagan holidays that existed way before Christianity that they said, Oh, well that's, that's bad. We have to, that doesn't promote God in Jesus Christ. So we have to take your holiday. We know you're going to continue to celebrate. We're going to change it. We're going to, we're going to completely change the name and change the meaning behind it, but we're going to keep it on the same day. So I, I don't, I'm never going to go to a, a hell house. I'm just not going to do it because it's nothing but Christian propaganda and it's their way of promoting their propaganda. The only reason to go to a haunted house people is one reason, one reason only, and that's to get the hell scared out of you, you know, and you need to have fun. And those are actually, those are the two things that you should expect from a haunted house. You should expect to get scared and have fun. And, I don't think that the hell houses promote that. So anyway, I got a little bit on my tie right there. So some religious group take things a step further by saying that Halloween is only a high profile part of the problem. Role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and the Harry Potter books and movies and even really wildly popular films like E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Ghostbusters are gateways to sin, right? How in the hell can you look at E.T. and say that movie is a gateway to sin? Or even Ghostbusters, for God's sake. How can those two movies be a gateway to sin? But there are some religious groups who try to spin it that way. Rap music and violent cartoons and video games and so on and so forth, those are all evidence of social moral decay leading to things like drug use and suicide and murder and all kinds of criminal and debauchery. And underlying all this is a conspiracy theory like belief that there are hidden meanings behind everything and powerful sinister forces at work trying to brainwash the innocent. Now we all know that that's not true. Yes, video games are violent. Not all of them, but there are a lot of violent video games. Does that somehow desensitize some of our youth to uh, what violence is and and violent acts? I actually think that it does. I'm I'm not going to get into a big hot debate and say and start, you know, going down that kind of, of rabbit hole, but I believe that the exposure that our youth today has to violence in both TV movies and in video games, I think that, and on the internet, right? I think it does desensitize a lot of them to violent acts. And I think it does help when you have these people who are unstable and then they go and they start shooting up people. I think the desensitization that they had with all these, this violence that they've grown up with, I think it kind of helps to them to have the, the stones to go do stuff like that. But is that, are these things evil? No, they're not evil. Are they an attempt to manipulate the youth of today and to desensitize them? No, they're not. It's simply capitalism, people. This stuff sells. Sex and violence sells. So the more sex and violence that you have in your video games and on your TV shows and in your movies, the more money you're going to make. And it's simply, that's what it comes down to. <coughs> Excuse me. So to wind down the episode, I, I've got 15 minutes left here. So to wind down the episode, you got to ask the question here. After all this that we've talked about, the question that it boils down to is, is Halloween satanic? Well, Halloween, Sowen, and Satan, the connection between Satanism and Halloween is even less plausible in historical content. Though a clear and direct historical connection between Halloween and so on has never been proven, many scholars and the public alike believe that the traditions are at least linked somehow, and I'm one of those people who absolutely believe that those traditions are linked. As for the allegedly sinister nature of that ancient Celtic feast, Nicholas Rogers, a history professor at New York University and an author of a book called Halloween, From Pagan Ritual to Party Night, 
says the following, and this is a rather long quote, but here we go. And I quote, we can dismiss the argument that so in was a satanic or that some essentialist sense Halloween is a satanic ritual as the Reverend Pat Robertson, the founder of the Christian Coalition, declared in 1982. Satanism is essentially a Christian creation, a travesty of Christian forms centered on the fallen rebel angel Lucifer. In fact, the early Christian church left little room for Satan. Certainly, Satanism was incompatible with the polytheism of the ancient Celts. Indeed, the belief in Satanic cults blossomed only in the late medieval period, long after the demise of Sowen. So, the confusion may have arisen in part because Wiccan witchcraft traditions worship a horned god which superficially resembles depictions of a goat-headed devil. This horned one, however, is a god of fertility, among other things, but mainly fertility. And since these early pagans didn't believe in anything resembling a Christian Satan, it could not have played a role in their rituals. It's true that Halloween has been associated with pranks and bad behavior for centuries. After all, trick or treat is a not so veiled extortion threat. But the idea that All Hallows Eve is a time for Satanists to run amok doing evil is nothing but the stuff of myth. So, yes, Satanists do celebrate Halloween as one of their holidays. However, this is a very recent adoption. Like I said, Satanism didn't come into existence until 1966, thanks to Anton LaVey, and he didn't even write the Satanic Bible until a few years later. So this is this religion is only 52 years old. Halloween was celebrated long before Satanists had anything at all to do with it. Therefore, historically, Halloween is not Satanic. Today, it only makes sense to call it a satanic holiday when referencing its celebration by actual Satanist. So if a Satanist celebrates Halloween, you can call it a satanic holiday. It's actually, like I said, the third of three official holidays of Satanism. So is it a satanic holiday? Yes, but it was only adopted after the invention of Halloween and trick-or-treat, because that's been going on for a very long time, and Satanism has only been around for 52 years. So, there you go. Halloween itself has really no connection with Satan or Satanism unless you are a Satanist who celebrates Halloween as an official holiday. And that's the only thing that Halloween has to do with Satanism. And like I said, LaVey just kind of uh, put that in there like a joke or an afterthought type thing, I, I guess. And it, maybe he was searching for holidays for his religion. I don't know. I haven't read the book of Satan. I haven't talked to Anton LaVey. He's dead anyway. I don't know why he decided ultimately to include Satan or to include uh, Halloween as part of his religion. Probably just because of all of the bad press that it had gotten over the years about it being a a, a bad holiday, a dark holiday. But it doesn't matter. Satanism has absolutely inherently nothing to do with Halloween, and Halloween has nothing to do with Satanism. So it is not a Satanic holiday. We are basically carrying out a long tradition of dressing in costumes, celebrating Solwyn, which is the celebration of the end of this life cycle of nature, 
and looking forward to the beginning of another one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything that I have to say on this special Halloween episode about Satanism and Halloween. Well, I certainly hope that you got something out of tonight's special Halloween episode of Parareality Radio. Let me know what you thought about it by dropping me an email, sandman at parareality.com. If you want to know more about the show, you can simply get online and head on over to parareality.com. That's where you can find out all kinds of information about the show. You can listen to the current and past episodes on the archives page, and if you Click on the Extras tab. You can join the official Parareality Radio Forum, which is free to join. Shop in the Parareality Radio Store and even watch some show videos and other stuff. Also, don't forget to look up Parareality Radio on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at Parareal Radio. I post a lot of interesting stuff on Facebook and Twitter, like upcoming shows, special guests, and interesting articles. Make sure you follow me on both of those social media platforms to stay updated on what's happening in the world of Parareality Radio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also on my Facebook page, I got some reviews up of some local area haunted attractions that I've been to here in the Nashville area this season. So if you want to read about what's going on in Nashville with the haunted attractions, man, we have some of the best, and I'm not lying, some of the best haunted attractions in the nation right here in Nashville. So if you're looking for uh, an alternative to your typical vacation, come to the Nashville area in October and experience our haunted attractions. We have, like I said, some of the best haunted attractions in the nation right here in good old Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, you can also now listen to Parareality Radio on a variety of different websites and streaming platforms. Man, the show, it it can be heard on all of whatever podcast platform you want to listen to it on. It's there. You can listen to it on, of course, it, it can be heard on Spreaker. You can hear it on Facebook, YouTube. You can uh, just listen to it directly from parareality.com. Uh, but you you can stream the show from Google Play, Stitcher, Player FM, Spotify, CastBox, iHeartRadio. You can, whatever streaming platform, except for iTunes, I still haven't worked out what's going on with the iTunes yet. Hopefully, I'll, I keep saying that. I've been saying it for months. Hopefully, I'm going to get this straightened out soon with iTunes or whatever podcast platform iTunes is is turned into but other than that you can listen to Parareality Radio on just a variety of all your your podcast platforms uh, also if you have a smart speaker all you got to do is just enable any of the skills for those podcast pla- podcast platforms that you listen to open them up and simply say play the Parareality Radio podcast my next show is going to be on Friday, November 15th, 2019, back on the regular schedule. It'll be 8 o'clock p.m. Central U.S. time. I'm going to try to have uh, Eric P. back in the co-host slot. It's been a minute since he's been here, and we're going to have something good to talk about on Friday, November 15th at 8 o'clock p.m. Central time. All right, before I close it down, I ha- I just have to do this. I'm going to play some more Halloween clips. This comes from the original 1978 Halloween movie that stars Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. This is about two minutes and 45 seconds worth of audio clips from the movie. I cannot close this show out without playing this. Halloween night. A small American town, 15 years ago. Michael? I spent eight years trying to reach him, 
and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. <laughs> I think you'll come back. Exploring uncharted territory. And totally charted. Just talk. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. The only reason she babysits is to have a Halloween. Okay, so I won't bore you with any more clips from Halloween. Can you can you tell I obviously love this movie, love this time of year, love this season, love this holiday. It's always been my favorite, and I hope to be celebrating with you guys many more Halloween episodes here on Parareality Radio. So that about does it. I'm running out of time. Everybody, I hope that this podcast opens up your mind to new ways of thinking, expand your consciousness and produces a change in the way you see the world. If you wish to change, you must lift the veil of ignorance that has been cast over your eyes. Only then will you see the true power of the universe. I hope that you have had a wonderful All Hallows Eve. I hope that uh, you stayed safe. And if you're still out partying for whatever reason, and you're listening to this podcast, why would you? But just in case... Be safe, don't drink and drive, don't take candy from strangers, and have a safe and wonderful Halloween weekend. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks, November the 15th at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. So make sure that you guys turn on, tune in, and find out. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. If you wish to change... You must first lift the veil of ignorance that has been cast over your eyes. Only then will you see the true power of the universe.